good night. Where, <laughs> wherever you are, um, we have a fairly light agenda this morning. Um, uh, the uh, Hackfest planning, obviously, for the February Hackfest continues. If you haven't registered, please do so. Um, <clears throat> the draft agenda is linked in there, and please do um, start fleshing that out. And again, I think you know the admonition should be um, more hacking, less yakking, um, because we're going to have uh, a day zero that will be um, uh, all of the uh, presentation material um uh for you know where things are and, and catching the uh the new people up with um with the projects so so on that topic um two quick things the sooner you can get agenda items in for the uh two full days of the hack fest we'll get that mapped out into a bit more structured of a format in terms of day one uh or the day zero the training day tracy do you want to just talk through your thought process on that quickly and just uh, see if folks have feedback, and then to Hart's question of who should show up, uh, I think we can tackle that as well. Yeah, sounds good. So, um, <clears throat> as I uh, mentioned last week, I took a stab at uh, defining what the schedule should be for that day zero, and you can find that in the, the link there. Um, but really, I start with ha a half an hour of welcome and introduction. So this would be just the, the general thing that we normally do at Hackfest, which is kind of go around the room and uh, you know, introduce people and, and kind of talk about kind of where they're at and just get, kind of get a feel for who the audience is. Uh, then uh, 45 minutes to just introduce what is Hyperledger, talk about um, the different projects and, uh, you know, how how we kind of function. 15-minute uh, break. And then uh, the next section before uh, lunch is really just getting up and running with Hyperledger Composer and Fabric and then setting up your development environment for Hyperledger, Composer, and Fabric. So this would get people up and running and, and setting up their uh, dev environment so that they are ready to make a uh, first commit at some point, uh, be it you know that afternoon or uh, on day one or day two. So after lunch, we then do the same thing for Sawtooth, uh, followed by a break, and then the same thing for Indie. Uh, so I chose uh, just a, a small number of projects because when I started putting all the projects in here, it just got um, a bit overwhelming, I thought, for people who hadn't actually been involved with the, the different Hyperledger projects before. Um, and then in the afternoon, a 45 minute kind of landing your first commit. So kind of what I was thinking is if, if we could uh, make sure that in JIRA or, or, or yeah, I guess all of these projects are in JIRA, if in JIRA we could set up uh, kind of the, you know, good help wanted bugs or the good first uh, bugs that people uh, would be um, maybe able to actually get a commit in um, to actually feel like they're they're participating and contributing. Uh, that would be great if we could kind of um, create that initial list for people. So that's, uh, that's kind of the agenda that I put together. Um, you know, I need to obviously reach out to people from these different projects to see if we can get somebody to uh, lead each of these different uh, sections and, and really focus in and, and get people, you know, started. So uh, open for feedback and open for your comments. <clears throat> so I think, Tracy, the one feedback that I would have is it's not clear to me that we need two 45 minute sessions for each project to both get started and get the development environment up and running. In some cases, it's going to be the same thing. <clears throat> but um, uh, I also tend to think that, um, uh, you know, it would be better if we could actually get all of the projects covered, including Burrow and, um, and, and so forth. And, um, and then maybe have a parallel track where if you've chosen to engage in one of them, you can get your environment set up, um, you know, from a development perspective. Because I don't know that everybody is necessarily also going to want to be a contributing developer on Sawtooth or Fabric or what have you. In many cases, they're there to learn and then they want to consume the project but not necessarily contribute to it. So I would maybe 
think of parallel track for if you'd like to get your development environment set up, we can have mentors who can, um, you know, be going through the the step by step um, in in different tracks. To the point where they can get on a command line and be productive, um, uh, and uh, and and also then finding enough uh, experts in all the projects to be able to come early, you know, is a bit more challenging than finding it for three. And that, those three were arbitrarily chosen. Um, they don't have to be the three. We could choose other three. Um, but I, I, yeah, those are the two questions I think for this group. I like the direction that, that Chris was taking it, that let's have a short intro session for each project who's able to send somebody so that the, the community that shows up there gets to, to see the menu, so to speak. And then you know they can dig in on whichever course interests them in some parallel breakout sessions. And maybe that is setting up a dev environment, but it might not be like a core development dev environment. It might be an application uh, dev environment. Right. Which, and again, that's where I think getting up and running is sort of the the equivalent to that. Yeah, um, I think Arno and I are converging in chat. Um, but what if we do something like we have introduction talks for the projects in the morning, and then in the afternoon we let people do everything from like set up environments to discuss applications. Uh, just in kind of a very uh, new person friendly environment. Okay, so if I'm hearing correctly, and I just want to make sure I am, uh, introduction with slides for each of the different projects in the morning and then uh, later in the afternoon, uh, we may have to go somewhat after lunch for those introduction slides as well. Um, have a just a hey go find the right table and, and have the conversation for uh, whatever it is that you want to do be it getting set up to write applications or being getting set up to actually contribute code is that what I'm hearing yeah I mean that's at least what I had in mind um, my thought is that it will be good for people to kind of understand the big picture and that's what we can kind of tell them in the morning and in the afternoon or um, I'm not sure anyone particularly people who's new will want to set up kind of uh, three different dev environments for three different projects right um, so what I would what I would be afraid would happen is if we did that is that people would just kind of do the first one and then like the second and third people would just peel off and get bored. And if we do some kind of parallel track, then people can kind of pick what they want to do and go from there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So the we we have first, and I don't know. I mean, morning, afternoon, whether this is the right split or not. But uh, first series of presentations that basically introduce the different projects, so people get a flavor of what these are, and then they can choose which one they want to follow up on and get more hands-on experience by setting up the development environment. Okay. Uh, so not, hear, okay. not hearing today, anything yeah. else, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just doing what you were going to do. Sounds like we've we've reached the end of, of this version of it. We can keep iterating. Yeah, so I'll I'll take a, another stab at it, and um, maybe I'll just send off to the TSC mailing list uh, kind of what the that has been updated so that people can have a look and provide a, additional comments or, or thoughts if um, that we can do that. Um, over email instead of kind of coming to the um, thing. I think the, the huge uh, thing with this, obviously, is um, if we're doing nine projects, right, that's uh, 
at least nine people, if not more, from each of the different, uh, or one from each of the different projects, but maybe hopefully more than one, um, because you'll probably want at least two from each of the projects if you're going to do the split of setting up your uh, development environment and then setting up your application development environment. So um, that is uh, obviously a, a call out to the community uh, and the different projects to uh, start thinking about who it is that's going to be joining us and, and maybe uh, if that's you, please let me know so I can uh, include your name directly on the uh, agenda. Okay, thanks Tracy. And yeah, I, I yep. definitely think that if we're going to try to have, uh, you know, show the flag for each of the projects, um, it definitely makes sense for, um, uh, you know, at least um, one or more of the maintainers from those various projects be uh, present. Um, um, just uh, again, because I think, you know, part of this is for, you know, those who are sort of in leadership roles in the various projects be present for the, the new attendees. Um, make them feel loved, right? Okay, thanks, Tracy. Um, okay, so uh, moving on, I, I don't know, Todd, did you want to say anything about April or June? Uh, so we're chatting with the Dubai folks right after this call, so that should be locked down soon, but we're tentatively April 29th to May 1st. And then Amsterdam is fully confirmed June 27th to 29th, uh, and we'll have the registration page up uh, hopefully by next week, but those dates are locked in. Okay, thank you. All right. In terms of project reporting, um, there will be none this week, um, and uh, we will defer Sawtooth to next week, and we'll have both Sawtooth and in uh, Iroha. Sorry, uh, part of that's cut off for me. Um, uh, read out next week, so hopefully those will be fleshed out. Um, the last topic of discussion was something that Dan brought up uh, in chat with me on the, on the board call um, yesterday, um, suggesting, you know, we, we've, you know, gone full circle with the reviews of uh, quarterly reviews for the projects and, um, and we're starting, you know, round two. These have been fairly um, useful, I think. They've uh, both, I think, helped I think, all the various projects reflect on where they are and, and get a sense of you know, where they are and so forth. Um, and, um, uh, and then they've also been great at sort of engaging uh, across projects, right, um, which I think is also a very positive thing. Um, we used to have, you know, sort of weekly readouts uh, from the working groups, and then I think it went to bi-weekly, and then we said, oh, just send an email and well <laughs> I, you know I, I think the, the 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 reality is is that we really haven't had many updates except when somebody has uh, a deliverable like the the requirements uh, uh, I'm sorry like the uh, the white paper working group and so forth so um, uh, so Dan was actually suggesting well, maybe we want to think about doing quarterly updates for the working groups as well um, and uh, you know for them to sort of periodically and I, I think it's 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 a little bit different than the project updates but uh, again for them to reflect on where they are do they have diversity of participation do they have uh you know dwindling participation is there you know are there you know deliverables being worked on and so forth um and so uh i'd like to briefly uh just sort of raise that with other members of the tsc and see if they agree that this would be a worthwhile thing to pursue um, and um, and what shape that might take. So Dan, maybe you want to weigh in because you're the one that brought it up. Yeah, uh, and, and I think you you covered the the gist of it. it I, I can't, uh, you know, from my perspective, I couldn't say necessarily what's going on in a lot of the working groups. And in some cases, you know, I could probably solve that myself by um, following some of the links that do get circulated and in other cases it's it's not clear if if a group is still active so on on one side of the spectrum I'd say you know Vipin does a great job advertising what's going on with the identity working group and that seems to be a pretty active uh, set of discussions there and then yep. um, you know I'll pick on the the use case working group I, I don't know if that's still active I don't know if those uh, discussions are still going on 
So if we've got a group that's, you know, maybe it's that group, maybe it's other groups that are really no longer active, we, we probably should go ahead and just formally close those off. Yep. Or if in the process to close those off, that re-sparks some new interest, then we can actually get some forward momentum again. Yep, no, I think this is good. Other thoughts? To uh, make the process of, I mean, <clears throat> I anticipate that'll mean even more kind of reporting uh, and discussion kind of processes at the TSC, which I think we do have the ability to handle, but I might suggest, especially since I anticipate us um, at Hyperledger staff making a case to uh, launch a few more sector specific working groups, um, like the healthcare working group that we have, if we implement that, um, we may want to encourage a move to kind of written reports ahead of time and optimizing the time on the calls for questions and conversation about the written written thing rather than you know kind of a ten minute monologue um, uh, from from you know from the working group itself. Yep. <clears throat> um, just another note on that. Um, uh, I'm assuming most of the working groups, well, at least the architecture and white paper, you know, we're pretty good about keeping. Um, kind of detailed notes about the conversations. Um, are you suggesting the, a kind of a one paragraph up leveling of that or um, maybe just making those notes more available? I think I'm, I'm kind of saying walking into a call, presuming that people have read the written summary um, and, you know, with maybe a, a minute, uh, you know, for those who haven't, but but that, you know, the detail, the proper detail and the expectation is that it's in the written summary and then optimizing the time on the call for a question and answer. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we actually do have written updates for each of the uh, project reports um, and then we usually you know allow the the person who's presenting to you know sort of do a voiceover not read it you know per se but to provide a little bit of context between the lines um, uh, you know again if we get too many of these then we may have to find a way of shortening it by getting people to actually read <clears throat> do a little bit of homework beforehand I agree but I think you know in terms of <clears throat> You know what um, uh, is is reported, um, Mick. To your point, uh, I wouldn't expect that it would be the detailed minutes or whatever of the the meeting so much as you know, like we have with the projects. Uh, you know, more sort of meta things about participation, diversity, um, uh, you know, frequency of meetings, pr progress on uh, any deliverables, um, uh, and, and that sort of thing. And so maybe suggest that, um, you know, maybe Tracy could sort of put together a suggestion for, um, you know, what that report might reflect just as she did with the, the projects. So, so similar to how the project reporting then goes back to the, the kind of the original proposal and progress against that, I'm assuming yeah. that this would go back against the charter. Right. Yep. In terms of uh, participation, I have a couple of comments to make. Uh, in the identity working group, you know, a lot of people show up on the calls, um, and also on the architecture and other working groups that I have been part of, people do show up on the calls, but uh, the amount of contribution, even from volunteers who had previously volunteered, uh, and to get uh, work output from uh, the volunteers is um, let let me put it this way difficult um, and uh, I see the same suspects uh, you know I mean which is normal I would assume like 80 80 percent of the work or 90 percent of the work is contributed by 10 or 15 percent of the people uh, but how can we broaden this this is something that we have to really think about. Uh, just having reports, just having these things uh, is a good thing, but at the same time, we have to uh, foster engagement, especially in uh, things that are not directly related to coding. Uh, you know, this is uh, 
problem and uh, also the projects when, uh, when for example in architecture or in uh, identity we do ask for uh, reps from projects to show up uh, and talk about their solutions or their um, um, you know viewpoint on things like identity or architecture or specific uh, yep. uh, things in architecture so we we need to uh, really as we are entering like or our third year, or so, uh, we we really have to think about uh, how to uh, foster that engagement a little better. Yep. So I, I, I think that's a good. I think that's a really good point, Vipin. And I think actually that if we were to go to some sort of a working group re readout, that you know part of that could also be you know the sort of discussions that I think we as you know, we, we, we were thinking about for the project reporting, which is, well, if you're having problems getting, you know, new committers or, you know, growing the diversity and so forth, that, you know, part of that conversation can be um, sort of, you know, peer mentoring, if you will, um, from members of the TSC and the broader community, um, you know, sharing their own experiences and their own approaches. And so, I think the important thing is, you know, recognizing to your point, Pippin, where maybe there is some challenges in, uh, you know, growing engagement and so forth, and and then using this as at least as a spring point, uh, you know, a springboard for um, having a sidebar conversation with some other working group chair or what have you, um, with you know potential suggestions for how that could be improved. Great, thanks. So, is it is it fair to say then that there's general um, positive vibe around this sort of thing, and that maybe we should ask uh, Tracy to to try and pull something together as she did for the others, for the for as the long box. as it's as long as it's not a just a box ticking exercise. I yeah, mean, you know. We, we, which is what uh, some of these devolve into. Uh, the uh, reports uh, languish, you know, somewhere. The, oh, did the identity working group submit its report? Yes. Tick. You know. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, I hope these reports can also be used as a way for the working groups to try to get more interest and participation from the community. Yep. Yeah, I agree hard. So Tracy, can we ask you to take that on? Sure, you can ask that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ask whatever you want. <laughs> nice. You can ask and she can ignore it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, Chris. I will work. Chris, I will work on that. Um, not sure if it'll be for next week's uh, call yeah, or not, that given that I'm in China. But I will definitely work on that. Yeah, I fully appreciate your travel schedule. Yeah, no worries. Okay, thanks. And yep. unless there's anything else for the agenda, then I can give people uh, half an hour back. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. All right. Thanks all. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. All right.